you're going to redo this video because the last one was 45 minutes. We're going to roll fast. So, <clears throat> what do we have? My new acquisition. Second gun of this year, probably the last. Um, although I, th I envision maybe getting one more for the year. Uh, it'll probably be either mid-year or toward the end. Uh, maybe it's a Christmas present. Uh, I will, and the plan is to get a, another Grand Power, uh, the P1 or the P1 Ultra. Uh, but for now, this will suffice. This is my birthday present. I turned 49 uh, two days ago. Um, so, what is this? This is the Beretta PX4 Storm, uh, compact, chambered in 9mm. Uh, so, <clears throat> What is it going to replace more than likely? It's going to replace my Grand Power. Both of these guns are clear. You'll have to trust me on that. I'm not going to be showing the, the safety Nazis that I'm safe. You trust me or you leave. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> this is the P11 Mark 12. It's not the Mark 7. It's the Mark 12. Uh, <clears throat> so it's a good gun. It, as far as subcompacts, it, it is uh, marketed as a subcompact. As far as subcompacts go, it's rather large. Um, it's bigger than my uh, my XD9 Mod 2. Uh, and uh, I mean that that's actually a small gun. That's a real subcompact. This is not really a real subcompact it's it's small but uh i've seen smaller um and not just with the springfield i just mentioned so <clears throat> this gun i'm gonna measure it up with this gun give me just a second here and let's pull out this uh magazine on this <clears throat> storm i'm gonna put it both together the grand power is gonna be on the bottom trying to do this in a way to where it's fair here so I'm gonna line up the uh, beaver tails and then hold it up so if you look closely <clears throat> the the length of the the Beretta is actually shorter when lining up uh, the beaver tails not by much um, the grand power is thinner and I'm not just talking about the controls and everything. I'm talking about the slide itself. The slide on the the, the bread is thicker, and it tapers wider as it gets toward the hammer. Um, the controls are actually wide. Um, that's a that's a negative for carry. Uh, let me hold up the guns another perspective so you can get another idea here on how uh, how the guns uh, match up ergonomics wise so you can see that the grand power is shorter in uh, in the grip area uh, that's to be expected um, otherwise they, they match up pretty much the same even the angle of, of the grip is relatively the same um, so this is a 15 plus one gun this is a 12 plus one gun and it's solely because of the grip the grip is longer on this gun um <clears throat> which of the two guns is probably going to carry better <clears throat> the grand power is because the grip is shorter uh you want guns with shorter grips because shorter grips means it mean that you're going to be able to carry it better um you're going to be able to hide the grip better um, it means less printing um, so the thickness of the guns uh, they matter as well um, so it, 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 it really depends on the holster uh, but you don't really want this is this is a pretty damn thick gun it's it's probably along the lines of my SP 2022 um, at least back here um, but even SP2022 doesn't have these controls sticking out. That's a bit ridiculous. I don't know why they did it the way they did. Uh, but they do have uh, <clears throat> parts, OEM parts from Beretta 
that make these stealthier. They don't stick out. They're, they're flat along here. Not only for the safeties here, but for the slide catches. So if you look at the slide catch, they're the, they're the same. They stick out. So they have flush levers for both of those mechanisms. Um, the only thing is, and, and, and this, that's a negative with this gun, as, you know, as well as with the way these stick out, is that a lot of times uh, their parts, you have to end up on a waiting list because uh, everyone's trying to make their guns. They're trying to get rid of these damn, these levers, especially these uh, safeties. Um, the safeties, they dig into you when you rack the gun. So I figured out a way to rack the gun to where it doesn't dig into me so much. At, when, I rack my guns by slingshotting anyways, but I have to reach under. If you look at my hands, I'm reaching under. And if you look over here, <laughs> I'm under, in most cases, I'm under the uh, the safety controls. So that makes it easy for me to rack the gun and I'm, I'm able to use these uh, serrations to <laughs> get a good rack. But I have to be careful when I do that because uh. Even though these aren't super sharp, they after a while they do irritate your hand. Um, I don't know why they did that. I really don't. Um, grip texture is good. Um, I swapped out for the large uh, back strap. It feels better. But the thing is, I don't know if I'm going to keep it. I might go to the medium instead, um, which is which has a slicker grip. I always thought that these were slick, and in a sense, going between you know right now going between the two guns, this one does feel slicker. But the problem is, is that I don't know if that's a fair assessment because this one's actually pretty thick itself. The 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 equalizer. For the the slickness of this gun is that it's it's longer. There's more to grab. Uh, that's not the case with this gun. So uh, it, they're kind of hard to compare. Um, both of the guns, this one and the Grand Power, have rotating barrels. I have to take this to the range. I'm going to do that this afternoon, uh, to, and I'll probably fire them back to back to kind of have a bake off between them to see which one has better trigger. And which one actually uh, has, uh, you know, the, the smoothness of uh, the uh, the recoil, how each gun mitigates it. Um, this gun shoots outstanding. Well, I've, I've always I've always said that um, the trigger is excellent. The, both the DA and the SA trigger, um, the way it uh, helps with. Uh, quick follow on shots because of that rotating barrel is actually really good um, I don't know if this gun is going to be the equal to that one to be honest I don't um, just dry firing now this gun has over a thousand rounds through it this gun is new so it's going to be difficult for me to kind of get a bead on which one has a better trigger until maybe I get 500, maybe a little bit more rounds through this gun. Um, I can tell you now the trigger is excellent. Uh, it's just not quite on the same level as the Grand Power. Those Grand Powers are, what's driving them is uh, they're very big. Uh, Grand Power is very big in the European uh, competition uh, arena. So uh, that's what drives their guns. Um, and that's what drives them to kind of be excellent shooters. Uh, this one, I'm not sure. Um, the trigger is actually pretty damn good. It's smooth. And they're probably jet. They're probably both DA triggers are probably in the 10 pound range, maybe a little bit less. Um, <clears throat> the SB22's uh, DA trigger is a little bit longer than this one. Um, so maybe all three of them the same because it, they're not really strong DA triggers. My Versa, that has a strong ass DA trigger. As well, my uh, TriStar uh, T100, which is a CZ <clears throat> inspired gun, that actually has a very long DA trigger as well and strong. These 
those three that I mentioned, uh, <clears throat> the uh, SB2022, this one, and the Grand Power, their DA triggers are very smooth. <clears throat> very smooth. Not particularly strong either. So I, I want to say less than 10 pounds. Um, so the trigger reset. The trigger break is actually pretty good. let you guys look at that one more oh, I let that out a little bit far but okay sort of grand power just double check in here this one actually the double the DA pull is actually uh it's different. I wouldn't say it's lighter, it's smoother. So <laughs> it's like it's super light. It's so light it's ridiculous. Yeah, so um, those are the two triggers. Um, which is easier to take down? Because I've been shooting this for a while and this has been my everyday carry gun. I'm more used to this one. I have to get used to this one. Um, in a sense, this is easier to put back together. Taking it down is easy. It, it's a lot easier with this one. Uh, Putting it back together because I'm not used to it. There's so on. There's some nuances of this gun when you put it back together. It's, it's you, you're gonna have to kind of practice. Once you once you get everything together, though, once you you've practiced, you know, done it a few times, it, it's a lot easier. Um, this one breaks more like a breaks down more like a uh, Walther uh, PPK. <clears throat> this is pretty much standard. Um, what else? <clears throat> One thing I don't like here is the way you see that space between uh, right there. I don't like that. The, the fitment could be better. Um, I didn't do that. Remember, I just got the gun yesterday. I put these on, and that's what I noticed yesterday. And it's on the same thing on this side as well just right there for some reason and you can actually feel it you can feel it flexing when you do this now, and the problem with that is <clears throat> if I uh, decide to put on talent grips is that flexing gonna interfere with the grips itself maybe maybe not another thing is, is that I have to make sure that this is the grip that I want before I put the talent grips on otherwise I'll mess up talent grips if I put those on and then decide later I don't like the backstrap on this let me go back to the medium so this is the large um, there are some tooling marks in this gun well yeah I saw one tooling mark under the slide under the, uh, the front sight here but I did see uh, some stressing it looked like someone that they, they peened looking for I guess doing strength tests on the slide at first, I thought those were tooling marks, and I was like, "They're not tooling marks. It looks like so. You know, they're it's going through standard quality assurance testing." So, uh, the only tooling marks again that I saw were right under the slide here, and I'd show you, but I don't want to take apart the gun. Um, and of course, it's got a rail. Um, I will be getting an uh, N82 holster for this, probably their uh, their competition uh, holster. It's the one that has the uh, the plastic shell instead of the, the rubber band that encompasses, you know, that holds the gun. Um, so, yeah, we're at the 15 minute mark. I'm trying to hurry up here. 
two magazines, uh, 15 rounds. Uh, the grand power holds 12. So, you know, plus one in the chambers, 13. Uh, this is 16. So it's because of the extra <coughs> grip length. Um, so I don't think that's a plus or a minus. Um, the magazines are very good quality. It says it says they're made in Italy. Italy they look like Mekdar. Um, there's not much difference between the two. Actually, this one looks like it's better quality, the Grand Power one. But uh, they're both very nice looking. Um, I'm looking forward to to using this gun. So I'll, I'll take it to the range this afternoon um, and probably shoot 100 to 200 rounds out of it. And I'm going to try and shoot at least 100 from the uh, Grand Power as well. I'm trying to get round count up on that, but that might not be essential for me to do because uh, I'm trying to get away from the Grand Power. Um, nice gun. I don't like the company's philosophy. I had some issues I explained about in the last video that I that I posted. Thought I heard someone. Uh, so it's either this gun or my SB2022. The SB2022 is a lot bigger than this gun. I'm surprised at the compactness of this gun. It's smaller than I thought. And I thought it would be cheap feeling. It actually has some quality to it. It feels good. Um, the pricing. I wanted to speak on the pricing. Um, I got this gun from Whitaker Guns um, for $429. With shipping, it was $449. That's good. It undercut every other place I was looking at by a good bit, over a hundred bucks. Um, my regular gun store, which I had this gun transferred to, I saw they had them in stock yesterday. When I last checked, they didn't have them in stock. I didn't feel like waiting for them to order. Um, and even so, the price difference was just incredibly different. Um, they were selling theirs for five seventy nine. That's one of the reasons why I don't use local gun shops. And a lot of people will say, well, if you don't support the local gun shops, then they're going to die out. Well, the place I got this from is a local gun shop. Not local to me, but it's still a brick and mortar small shop that I happen that, that happens to have an online presence. And I bought from them and I bought it a lot cheaper and they shipped it to me, and, you know, to my FFL. And I bought the gun from them just had it transferred um, so you got to remember that for these stores even though they have a lot online presence they're they're more than likely they're local stores they're local to someone so there shouldn't be a problem in buying local I mean buying online now you know we're not talking Gander Mountain we're not talking Bass Pro we're not talking Cabela's uh, we're not talking any of the bigger uh, the smaller than Gander stores that are bigger than any of the mom and pop stores such as Sportsman Outdoor, Superstore, Rural King and all those other ones. We're talking just the everyday person that is like you and me that just happened to run a business, uh, you know, dealing with guns. Just because you buy a store, uh, you know, from a store online doesn't mean that they're a big store. So I wanted to put that out there because, uh, there's there's plenty of people that I hear all the time. They're saying, "If you, what are you buying online for? You support your local gun store. Guess what? That gun, I might, have, you know, it might, you know, I might have bought this gun several hundred miles from where I'm at now. But it, if I were to drive there and look at them, it would probably look just like the store that's ten miles from me that it, that's owned by a mom or a pop. There really is no difference. They're just having an online presence to get a competitive edge." And, and and that's the thing if, if a lot of local gun stores what what made this what made them sell this gun for 429 bucks and my my that store that's local to me couldn't you know you, you're gonna have to kind of factor that in I don't know the reason why but I'm gonna buy the cheaper gun I'm gonna buy the cheaper gun I'm telling you right now 
you might have your philosophy that's that's good on you that's not mine that's not my gut you know that's not my philosophy um, I think my philosophy makes sense for me um, again I'm doing my part in supporting a local gun store that might not be local to me but it's still a mom and pop everyday person that's actually helping me out you know and for someone that lives 10 miles away from where I bought that gun that's probably a good thing that's a good thing for them right and I would think that people who are in Kentucky somewhere and they order from one of the local gun stores that's 10 miles from me it, 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 it works the same way right yeah it does so uh, anyways <clears throat> another thing if you are thinking on buying a Beretta uh, today be aware that Beretta is offering a $75 uh, I guess a mail-in rebate for any gun that you buy for this month uh, so guess what I got that gun for 429 and I'm getting a $75 rebate as well so that's gonna mean that I spent three hundred and something dollars on this gun. Three fifty, three seventy-five. That's that's pretty good for for a PX4 storm. When locally for me, they were going for five seventy, five seventy-nine. So yeah, I made a good. I got. I made a good deal on this one. Um, so we're done. I cut the video length in half. The prior. The prior uh, take was 45 minutes long. I stuck to the facts here. Um, we did talk about about the, the, the local gun stores and my philosophy on those. I think I thought that was important that I do that. Um, I want to be able to give all the <clears throat> the gun owners and gun buyers, uh, I guess, different perspectives on these things, so that people, you know, when they make these these comments online. Um, they need to be aware that hey, it's uh, it's don't just take anyone's word on the internet. You know, just because people rant and rave and parrot something doesn't mean that it's true, right? I'm loading my gun. One in the chamber. Manually de decocked, ready to go. Uh, my parting statement is: <clears throat> If you're a supporter of guns, just because Trump won, and just because the Republicans control the House and the Senate, doesn't mean this is the time to be lazy. <clears throat> Keep supporting your local organizations and and fighting the good fight um, it, in a perfect world it, all the states will be constitutional carry I've been noticing that a lot of uh, a lot of states have been fighting for constitutional carry with uh, there have been some successes um, some of those have been uh, failures um, keep fighting the fight keep fighting the fight that's all I have to say. We're done. Bye-bye. Have a good day.